Now the next track, How Many? What, 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 what's up with this song right here? Because originally, I heard that Rakim was supposed to be featured on this track. Definitely, man. Definitely. Um, it just didn't, I, I think, you know, dealing with the guys, timing, I, I don't think, and well, really, Ross said he wanted to do the track. Um, his management, and I, I, called, I even called him Kid Capri, sent it to him numerous of times, but you know, Sometimes I think Robbie at the top of the now, you know, he's the guy. Sometimes he can go to the top of the now and just look at the world from there. So um, that, it didn't work out, but you know, who knows? He, he still got it, you know. I you know, wanted to jump on it. It would have been great. You know, I was in the mind state of something from 88, back when him and Kane, you know, I had Kane in mind. I had Coogee Rap. I mentioned them all through the album, and Karis one. So I was in that era. And, and just thinking, blazing something back in the 88 and rhyming for them dudes, because I always rhymed for them. And I always wanted them to respect me, you know, coming out. So I was always thinking, yo, what if, what if, what if I ran into Rob? I remember being in my crib, just saying, writing my name down and writing Rob Kevin, Big Daddy King, featuring Slick Rick, and featuring Coochie Rap. <laughs> So, are, th are those the most influential artists on, on your, your style? Like, when you were coming up, I, mean, I heard you mention KRS-One, Rakim, uh, Big Daddy Kane. Who is it you feel really had a strong influence on your style? I mean, all of them. All of them, man. I mean, Kooji Rap had Rose, I mean, not Rose to the Riches, but one of the Dead or Alive, that album was <laughs> impeccable. So, yeah, all of them, man, all of them. Kane, when I first heard they all did. They all had something to do with it. And outside of that was, um, was you know, the nicest guy I knew at that point, um, period was, um, you know, I would say Jizza. That's the nicest MC that I, I knew. Timbo was there also, you know. So it was a, it was a couple of cats that I, I, I looked at growing up. But um, definitely the, the top six, I guess. Everybody said the top five. I don't know if it's five of them. But uh, you know, definitely yeah. looking at them. The next song on your track list is Uprising. Tell us a little bit about Uprising. What does that mean? Uprising, my man, Shaquem came through and blessed it. Yeah, that was crazy, man. He just came through and he played the joint. It was it was dope. Heard it along with my man Magnetic. And you know, who's gonna be on the for the next joint? It was gonna be on a he's crazy. He did this strike on the nursery, we're gonna get a soundtrack. Shaquem came through with two tracks. I'll tell you about the other one. And it, it was just dope. It was dope. So that was just a, me jumping on the mic right then and there. Gotta get off my chest. One taker. All right, now on your next joint, Melodic, you got Hellraiser, who you, you've worked with numerous occasions. And of course. Tell us about the process of making Melodic. How was that? Melodic was, uh, see, God's Wrath, they did the track. They came through and did the most of the track, but they came through because I met them. I was already like almost done with my album. <laughs> I was almost done with the album, and they came through and I heard these beats, man. They just gave me these tracks, man. I was out in Europe, I think, um, doing some shows out there, and um, they ran into me. Um, they was with uh, Shabazz's Disciple, and they they was like, "Yo, Priest, we was looking for you, man. We've been looking for you." And um, Baz told me, he's like, yo, man, they're on another level. They, I was like, okay. I heard it. I was like, yeah, I like that, man. That's cool. They came through. They gave me a CD. And I heard Melodic. And I was like, oh, man, this beat is crazy. I'm doing that. So initially, Timbo was on there. I got to get him back. Timbo was on there. But um, I think I kind of wanted to hug that track, man. That was by myself. But Razor, I couldn't take him off because he really, like, rocked it. Rocked it at the end. Timbo was on there. He rocked it. But it, no, he, he had to come do his verse over him, something like that. So in the middle, I was just kept writing, man. I was like, no, nah, I'm going to continue doing that. So that's how that. And, uh, and I did a song called Melodic. So it's called Melodic Part 2 because I did a, uh, a song called Melodic. It's never been out. All right. Now, the next next joint is a term that we're familiar with, priesthood. With Il Nadi. Okay. Melodic was with Il Nadi. I was trying to think of his name. <laughs> With priesthood, we're familiar with the term priesthood, but now we have priesthood on the offering. How has priesthood changed since the previous times we heard priesthood? Right here, right on my neck. See that? Tattoo. 
That's the priesthood. Priesthood was my first time ever stepping out and being independent. It's me leaving MCA, Geffen, the, the, the corporate industry, and just saying, man, I had enough. And at the same time, they didn't want me to. That's why I had to get, I had to get real with it. So Priesthood was the first album I did for solo. So, and that's my also my name. So it's like I had to take that and do a song with it. When Sane 720 came through and blessed me with that beat in New York a while back. So I like the Cali sound of it. I had to blaze it. Now, the next track we got here is Energy featuring the Horseman. Now. I know that's crazy. What what was that like to have the horseman in one room again? Great. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like a it's like a pilgrimage that we all went through, that we all come back together, you know. So the horsemen are gonna be crazy. They came through. First it was me, then it was Raz Cas, Cannabis, Corrupt. So that's the order you get, you know what I'm saying? So corrupt I mean actually Cannabis gave me a rhyme that was so fucking long and crazy. It was insane. I was like, this dude is nuts, man. And, um, and Raz Cast came through. You know how Raz do it. And then Corrupt just beast out on him. I really liked that one. The beat was done by Fourth Disciple. It was like, I think Fourth had that beat for a long time. I've been hearing a lot of things, you know. Fighter Cast told me that beat was around. So, but it's genuine, man. It's Fourth Disciple. Working with him again was great. Mm -hmm. so also, what, Fourth did the original beat to Gun for Gun. So, what's the future for The Horseman? Future for The Horseman is an album, hopefully. Okay. Uh, definitely, definitely. I ain't gonna say that. Because me and Corrupt is kicking it. And that's all you need. You need Corrupt, Cannabis, and Bass. Never March. So it's just gonna be the horseman. We don't even know what you should call it for. It's gonna be a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. You're a horseman, I'm a horseman. When do you like to be a horseman? Mm -hmm. So, so what can we when can we expect the project? When we can well, cause now you got us in, in anticipation now. When can we expect the project of that caliber? Time will tell I can't tell you that. Mm -hmm. Next joint is Ghetto Jesus. What, what what's Ghetto Jesus about? Ghetto Jesus is get familiar with the Lord, something that a hood can understand, but it's getting, it's putting Jesus to, you know, because I, I don't see Jesus as everybody else, I mean churches do, you know, I got to relate to somebody that everybody else can relate to, and it was just something witty, that's all, it was just something witty, I thought about the Last Supper, flipping that into some gangster stuff like that real quick. So everybody, but it's it's to intrigue the the thugs out there, those cats are doing something that that something spiritual don't have to always be that way. But I, I came into y'all world to bring that type of it's just a hot concept, man. That's to me, ghetto Jesus is my ten crack commandments. Now the next joint is the title track, the offer. Now, this is the title track. What, tell us about it. How, how is it uh, <coughs> important to the album? Chucky Madness. See, um, Razor gave me a CD. I heard the beat. I fell in love. I was like, okay, this is where I want to go. You know, he was like, yo, Chucky Madness did that. You know, he was at the studio. I was like, I, don't, I, I asked him, I was like, yo, who did that? He's like, Chucky Madness. Chucky Madness did that, man. As soon as I did it, I just dove right in on it. And then uh, Razor had came through with the hook. Like, you know, so that was, that was just dope, he, he was there. And um, I was doing it and it was like, that's that's just the beauty, man. That's the first song I did for the offer. Bro, Ghetto Jesus was, that was the second. 